at time of arrival in Georgetown. Um, we would normally do a little introduction to historic Georgetown, basically taking you on a short tour of um, Georgetown and the historic sites um, that we have in Georgetown. Um, day two, basically, um, of course, you overnight at one of our hotels um, in Georgetown. Day two, um, it's a one hour flight from uh, the Eugene F. Rai International Airport, located at Ogle, um, just about 10 to 15 minutes away from the city of Georgetown. And those flights are usually um, early in the morning, uh, between 8 and 9 a.m. It takes you to the Eokrama Airstrip, which is located at the Amerindian village of Fairview. Now, Eokrama, of course, is well known. It's um, one of our, um, it's called Green Heart of Guyana, and it's a million acres or 371,000 hectares of our rainforest that we would have pledged to the world in 1989, which later became a protected area in 1993. Um, so there's a, essentially a village that is found within that reserve, and it's called Fairview. And the airstrip, incidentally, is located there. So you arrive at Fairview Village, a village um, predominantly um, inhabited by the Makushi tribe, which is one of our nine uh, tri uh, indigenous tribe from in Guyana. And um, from there, we, we introduce you to uh, the mighty Esequibo, um, which is our largest river in Guyana and one of the largest in South America. And um, most notably, it's actually one of the, the least frequented rivers uh, in the world. And that is why uh, it still remains one of the best river to sport fish. Uh, from uh, Fairview, it's uh, about an hour or hour and a half, depending on the, the water levels and uh, the capacity of the boats and, and its engine and so forth. And it takes you to Piriba Lodge. Now, Piriba Lodge um, came into being in, in 2016. And um, we have 12, sorry, uh, six uh, twin rooms that can easily occupy 12 anglers at any given time. So um, we are mindful, of course, that we, at any given time, we, we would not want to see more than 12 persons um, on the river fishing. I think uh, more, more often than not, we have, a, we have groups between eight and 10 um, using five boats, two person to a boat. Um, so your, your second night basically is more or less an orientation and the uh, acclimatization to the, the jungles of Guyana. And uh, we actually uh, prep you up for the, the following six full days of fishing. So day three, uh, day three was um, the, 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 the Escribo River system, which is of course uh, part of the, the Amazon River system. There are multiple species, um, similar to that, what is found in the Amazon. Um, of, of course, there, there are some species that uh, are found in the Amazon and south of, the, uh, of, of South America that we don't have. But uh, when you think of South America and you think of the Amazon, basically most of the species are found in the Esquipo. Um, so on day three, we, 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 we take you out uh, lure fishing, more or less, uh, so you can get uh, climatized and accustomed to the weather conditions. Sometimes the, it can be very harsh. The, the sun can be very harsh. And um, the target species, um, primarily on, on, on day three, which is your first official fishing day, um, would be peacock bass and um, arowana. Now, whilst the river system has multiple species, of course, different species inhabit different areas. There are some species, for example, like um, the payar and so on, they, they, they require um, a higher oxygen intake and you'll find them more in the rapids and so on. So the three peacock bass, arowana, they're more or less um, found in similar places. And, um, what a fun day. Um, and of course, every single day gives you, gives you an opportunity if you are, you're an average, you're a professional photographer, or you just um, like taking out photographs. Um, the river system is so 
beautiful, the area is very pristine, lots of wildlife, lots of birds. So this is also um, an attraction by itself. Therefore, uh, again, we take you out um, uh, to different places. Um, today we target one of the, the species uh, that a lot of uh, our anglers come to, um, to catch, and it's called the payara or the uh, vampire fish. Um, and the payara is very unique, as you can see uh, from the picture here. It has two large fangs on the, on, on the lower jaw. It actually protrudes um, the upper jaw. And what is very, what is very unique about this particular fish uh, is that it has two grown fans that lies in the lower jaw, a spear. And uh, should there be damage or, or a broken tooth, you would find that it's immediately replaced. Um, and this is very unique to the payara. And the payara, they are found in fast flowing rapids um, because they require a high oxygen intake. And it's a fish that um, one should be very careful with in terms of taking it out of the water to, for prolonged periods because of its high oxygen intake. So you should be very quick in terms of taking your pictures and so on and, 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 and release um, back into the water. So on our third uh, day of fishing, which officially is day six in the total itinerary, we start to target the larger or the bigger boys. And um, one of the, the species that is uh, very common in the Amazon river system would be the red tail catfish, um, sometimes referred to as the express red tail. And this is one of the species that can grow over 100 pounds. And, uh, it's actually one of the targets, species for a lot of the, the anglers that are into catfish fishing. And like the other catfish, they're all found in, in deep pools um, beneath the river, the river uh, system um, on the river beds. And um, the method that you actually use is, is quite different, of course. Um, we use um, either live baits, small piranhas or cut bait that is a slice of fish on, on a size of hook that is um, recommended for these kind of um, species. And uh, it's placed um, with a sink or basically a, a lead sink. And of course, these are all very common with the average or professional anglers. So it goes down to the bottom of the riverbed and that's where the catfish are found. And, um, you know, more often than not, you land a very good red tail. So we, we, we are on day seven, um, and this is actually bringing the curtains down actually on your, on your normal standard um, six day fishing. And um, one of the, the most, um, one of the, the highlights basically of, of any Amazon fishing trip would be um, the, the, the Goliath catfish, commonly called the Lau Lau, or in Brazil, they're called the Piraiba. And, um, the, and our lodge is named after this particular species because the habitat is just in front of our lodge. So um, in cases where your time is running out, a lot of, a lot of the anglers um, want to fish into the night. So they just set up camp on the riverbanks and they, and, and in front of the lodge is a very good spot for the Piriba or Lau Lau. Last but not least, I think um, a lot of people, um, when you think of the Amazon, you think of the Arapaima. Um, now, whilst Arapaima, Arapaima is considered um, a protected species, um, Guyana boasts a very healthy population due primarily to a lot of work um, by the indigenous community to protect this species and its habitat. So um, Guyana is one of the few places that you can come and catch an arapaima in the wild. 
Um, we have varying methods that are used, and these are still gray, gray areas that we are working on. However, um, it's the care that goes into and the, the method that goes into touching the arapaima remains very, very particular. And um, like in all cases, um, photographing of the arapaima and all the other species, you know, you, you take as least time as possible to get your photos without actually removing the fish completely from the water. So the arapaima actually is um, the highlight more or less of uh, the, the, the fishing package. And as you will, you will agree that most of the anglers, this is a dream species um, to catch and to have um, the experience of. So the penultimate day is actually when you leave um, the, the lodge. However, in between of all of these fishing, there's so many other species that, um, that are targeted in between. And of course, it depends also on um, the kind of fish that you, know, that you actually are targeting. Because a lot of people, when they come to countries like Guyana, they would have already visited Brazil and maybe some other South American countries. And um, they would have catch, um, let's say a payaro, they would have catch bigger peacock bass. And um, the, the target might be um, the, the Haimara as it is called, um, but actually the correct name is the Trairo. And we have two species, which is the lesser Trairo and the, the larger, which is the Haimara or wolf fish, as you can see in this photograph here. And that's a very aggressive species, and some sometimes uh, many of the anglers actually want to have um, a go at the wolf fish. So these are all species, and uh, in addition, there's also the the the, the tiger uh, the sh tiger shovel nose, which is uh, called in Brazil the surubim. And whilst in Paraguay and and uh, more south of the the southern rivers in South America, you, there's a larger species actually, which can grow um, over 70 pounds. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that species in Guyana. What we have is the regular uh, tiger shovel nose or surabin. Um, and we have the kobe, uh, which is not actually a very uh, popular fish amongst anglers. Um, it's more a fish that um, the natives would actually catch for food. And we have uh, the, the red paku, um, which is actually a not eating vegetarian fish um, that makes it almost impossible to catch with a lure um, simply because it doesn't eat other fishes. Um, however, we have de de developed a method using a spinner, which actually looks like a floating weed or a floating knot of some sort. And it actually takes this, uh, these spinners and uh, we've had quite a good success. And I believe whilst many would argue that the peacock bass, um, pong for pong is the hardest fighter. I think if you come across, um, if you're hooked onto a red paku and this paku inhabits the, the rapids and the fast flowing areas in the SUK born the Amazon river system, you would probably have more to say about which species pong for pong is the hardest fighter. So here's your picture. It's a, it's a female red paku. Um, the male are actually brighter red than the females. So that brings us to the end of actually uh, the standard um, six days of six full days of fishing. And um, the morning we head back to the Ilkram airstrip. And um, there's always an option for extended stay, extended fishing days, and um, to combine your fishing trip with maybe other areas, other lodges in Guyana. And very close, of course, is the Ilkram River Lodge. So we would also want to encourage you to, to maybe stay one night at the Okrama River Lodge before your flight back to Georgetown. And here, 
George, so if you didn't get a chance to actually because of your arrival time on, on the first day, it gives you a second chance to explore a more beautiful capital city of Georgetown and its historic sites, the, the local cuisine, the nightlife, and all that comes um, you know, with with it. So here we are actually saying goodbye the, the, the night before and on the 10th day is your 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 international flight. <laughs>